The temperatures are below a million degrees finally, so the roof will be open at State Farm Stadium. It's a six o'clock kickoff tomorrow, so increased traffic. Be prepared, Bird Gang. Star rookie Marvin Harrison Jr. cleared concussion protocol. He is good to go for tomorrow's game. The wideout returned to practice on Thursday. He left last week's game in Green Bay in the second quarter, but through six weeks, MHJ has 17 catches for 279 yards and four touchdowns. Whether it's the Rook or another vet, it all comes down to execution. We need to do more collectively to win more games. So that's all our energy and focus is right now is what do we, can con what do we control, how that impacts beating the Chargers on Monday night. So that's where our headspace is at. Cliche, but every game to me is a must win. I believe going into this game, yeah, we want to win the game and we need to win the game. Um, but in order to do that, we got to execute. They play a lot of coverages, so it's very hard to predict what exactly they're going to do. So I think it just comes down to our execution. So I think it was going to be a great matchup um, on prime time to go in there and kind of solidify ourselves. So I'm looking forward to it. Everyone's look, taking a good, hard look in the mirror, and we're still in a great spot. Even though we haven't played up to par, I haven't played up to par, we're still in a great spot sitting at 2-4, two and 2-0 two and in division. And, you know, we have a chance with 11 games to reach our – our potential and I think Monday is a great opportunity just to go out and do it because we ha I know we have the guys we have it's not a question of talent we just have to go execute and perform all eyes will be on the Cardinals tomorrow night for Monday Night Football when they host the Chargers let's welcome in Doug Franz host of the Doug Franz Unplugged podcast Doug a game preview looking ahead after a frustrating outing in Green Bay but they're still in the mix in the NFC West this team what do you predict tomorrow night well, that's a good question. I think the Chargers are a better football team, so I'm a little worried the prediction would be pain. That's an old Rocky three yes. line there. But the, to me, the one thing is the Chargers have been really good with, in a stat that I care about, which is yards per carry. And they do well when they rushing per attempt. The catch is in the last three games, they've been terrible. So this is the time to strike, but their O-line should be healthy. So that's the real key here. If the Chargers come in with a healthy offensive line, I don't think the Cardinals are going to fare well. So what do you think will be the advantage or the weakness that the Cardinals can exploit within the Chargers? You know, what's funny is it's kind of the same answer. If the offensive line isn't clicking because they just recently got healthy, then there will be a major advantage because we all know what's the biggest weakness of the Cardinals. It's that defensive mm -hmm. line. So establishing the run like every Harbaugh team wants to do, if the Cardinals can stop that and force them to throw, the Chargers are still good one-dimensional, mm -hmm. but not very good. And that gives the Cardinals a, a really good chance if they can force them into the pass. Looking back through the last several seasons, since 2020, the Cardinals are something like 3-9 and nine in Oof. primetime games, and they're not very good at home. Uh, but what do you think this game will tell us about the Cardinals moving forward? Well, number one, I look at it as what did the game tell us before we move forward? Even though this game will be shown locally, it will not be shown nationally. This is the first time in NFL history a Monday night football game is not on national television. Mm. That's an embarrassment to this organization. The Everybody in that organization should be looking in the mirror and saying, what have we done to not earn it? Because ESPN has two channels they can show it on, and they chose to put the Cardinals on neither. That shows you all you need to know about the state of this organization, at least in the mind of the NFL and the television partners. We'll get you out on this. Do they win on Monday Night Football? No. That's a, that's a complete sentence, folks. I mean, nah, I, no. I want them to. I care about you as a Cardinals fan, but no. He's keeping it real. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Always. Let's get some keys to the game. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bo and Johnny from the PHNX Cardinals podcast. All right, let's get right into it. Bo and Johnny. Johnny, we'll start with you. What are some keys to victory for the Cardinals this week? How do they pull this one off after a stinker last week? Yeah, I, I think the Cardinals under Johnny Gannon and Drew Petsy aspire to be what the Chargers are. Physical, running the football, pressure on defense. I just think that the Chargers do it way better. And I think on the flip side, if the Cardinals want to win this game, they're going to have to win it in a way that might be uncomfortable for them. They're going to have to be a big play offense. And then defensively, opportunistic, I think, comes to mind. Just don't think they can match player for player against the Chargers. Chargers have a better line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. 
Cardinals will lose that matchup. They have to go big play offense. What the Chargers are going to want to do, this is a dream matchup for them. I mean, this is one of the worst rush defenses in the league. And what do the Chargers like to do under Jim Harbaugh on the offensive side of the football is run the football with J.K. Dobbins. And so what the Cardinals have to do is get off the field defensively, something they haven't been able to do with the exception of the second half against the Lions and the 49ers. It's a tough ask, but that's the way, that's the path to victory. All right, speaking of tough ass, can this offense, like, please do what we all expected it to do at the beginning of the year? How does this offense get going? I mean, we got to, it has to go through one to 18. We got a t shirt. It's one plus 18 equals six. We've seen it four times this season, but have we seen it consistently enough through 60 minutes of a football game? We have not. And what's the disconnect there? Kyler said earlier this week it's been fixed as far as the miscommunication. Now, can they, after six games, can they finally get back on track? And I think if they can, that can take this offense back to where we expect it to be and the strength of this team. Probably majority of it lies on the offensive coordinator. I hate being that guy that points at coaching, but I think highly of Drew Petzing, and I think he did a great job last year given the limited tools he had access to. But when there are expectations, I mean, you can make an argument, Cam. This is the best combination of quarterback, young wide wide receivers, young tight end, and, and proven running back that they've had certainly since Carson Palmer and Kurt Warner were here. So now it's up to the offensive coordinator to make the most of this unit. You know, we've had people on our show, Cam, time after time, questioning the fit, not the player, but the fit. You have a responsibility if you're Drew Petsy, and if you want to remain the offensive coordinator for the Arizona Cardinals, like when you're gifted a playmaker of this value, of this, of this stature, a prospect like this, who's a tremendous human being. I mean, Cam, you've talked with him off here. He says and does all the right things. He works incredibly hard. There are no excuses for him to be kind of this much of an afterthought and it, for it to look this difficult. I mean, there's no excuse for that. That's the biggest thing. It just looks hard. The entire offense looks hard when you watch them play football. Uh, I don't think there's any fix in finding this pass rush. Maybe you guys can help us out with this, Johnny. I know this will get you fired up. Will they find a pass rush finally uh, at this point of the year? Uh, I, maybe from their back seven by blitzing. I mean, the Cardinals don't like to blitz under Nick Rollins. They need to blitz more. Put some pressure on the quarterback. I'm tired of it looking like it went to the dry cleaners, another team's jersey. It's crazy. <laughs> it was a very conservative effort by Monty Austin for this offseason, and I think he would probably opt privately to say he made some mistakes. I mean, you took a blocking tight end in the, in the top 90, but you can't find a, a pass rush on this team. And again, they, they B. Joe Gilari, Darius Robinson, they're – uh, you know, lack of availability because of injuries. You lost some defensive linemen. But at the end of the day, like, it's not an NFL caliber defensive line right now. Can you get scheme it up? Can you figure it out? And we're just not seeing maybe the want to. I mean, obviously, you've got to kind of not put your defensive backs in a compromising position. And I think that maybe at some point in order to – generate some sort of pressure like they did against Brock Purdy to win that football game in Santa Clara. Can they get Jalen Thompson on a safety blitz? That's going to maybe put the ball in harm's way because otherwise you're asking these pass rushers to, it's like asking me to break dance. It's just not possible. I'm going to look like the person from Australia, Ray gun, and you're going to look awful out there. It's I'm not capable of it. And I don't think they're capable of just going out there and generating pressure just because it's a different team. Johnny, I think you found your newest segment. Bo's breakdance, right? I've seen it, and you don't want to see seen it. you've seen it? Yeah. Oh, you my don't goodness. See it. Just like this Cardinal pass rush. You can't yeah. go back from seeing it. <laughs> All right, let's end it this way, guys. Johnny, do they win this game? I do. I think they win it. I think it's a must win. I think this is a, the first primetime game, if you want to call it that. It's on ESPN+. Plus. You win this game, there's a clearly defined outlook path to get to 500 again. You lose this game. I mean, can we talk about it on our show? You're going to be talking about having maybe tough conversations about the trade deadline in a couple of weeks with guys like Buda Baker and, and James Conner in contract years. You're just I, I back to where you were last year, right? right. You're back to the same thing, yeah. on the same path to the same win Where's total. Where's the progress, state? right? Yeah. The Chargers, and I love Jim Harbaugh, and I love Justin Herbert, they just started their rebuild, just like Washington did. Are you going to let multiple franchises who just began your rebuild, you had an 18-month head start on these teams, are you going to let them leapfrog you? I have a tough time right now saying that this team and predicting that this team is going to win when it's told me otherwise for one and a half seasons. Well, way more than that, but under the new regime. Yeah, we've seen so many losing. It's all kind of blend together. I get it. Guys, thanks for the time. We appreciate it. Thanks, Cam.